welcome back to Millennials to Millionaires. I'm Alicia Ace West. Daniel Kingsold. And today's guest is a designer who essentially had a pivot, right, to this new career and is um, the person we can thank for these beautiful paintings that you always see behind us every single time. Welcome, Amir. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Um, what kind of artist do you define yourself as? Because it's not, I said painting, but it's really like not a painting. So yeah, let's so break I'm that a, down. I'm like more of like a modern age artist. Um, mm -hmm. I use technology, right? Mm -hmm. I have a graphic design background. I've been in the, in the business for like the last 15 years. Yes. So um, digital wave is happening right now with yeah. NFTs and it's, it's a new big wave. Mm -hmm. So I've just jumped on it and uh, I feel like I'm ahead of the curve with it. Mm -hmm. So you've been creating art, but um, from what I know, you used to do something else. I was a club promoter for you many years. You were club years. promoted, and Correct. then COVID yes. Yes. hit and was like, sorry, well, actually, clubs are no, closed. No, it wasn't even that. I, I, I got myself out of the business okay. um, way before COVID. Oh, okay. Hit, right? so perfect so, timing. You got yeah, I, um, I was in the club business for uh, a total of about eight years. Mm -hmm. well, my last two years, I um, accumulated enough money to buy my own club. Mm -hmm. I had uh, about four partners, uh, mm -hmm. four to six partners, and um, we bought the old Coburn nightclub. We turned that over to uh, same nightclub. Mm -hmm. And then two years after that, I got myself out of the business. You were like, all right. I transitioned into mm -hmm. uh, dental marketing. I had mm -hmm. quite a few offices that I was doing all the PR, all the marketing, all the digital aspects to them. Yeah. And then um, I kind of got bored of that. I uh, started flipping homes out in Hamilton for mm -hmm. about a year. I didn't like the tediousness of it, the, the lengthiness of trying to get your investment back. It takes yeah. time. Exactly. Yeah. And then, like, I, I was so used to making money on a daily basis. Quick, quick, quick cash. I was just, my whole life, it was, like, quick money every day. You know what yeah. I mean? And then for, uh, for, like, a year, I had to, like, wait six months to a year mm -hmm. to collect and, and kept putting, 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 and nothing coming in. Yeah. It wasn't for me. Yeah. I went back to the drawing board, and I was like, what am I going to do with myself? And um, I was at a very comfortable place in my life, mm -hmm. so I said, I'm going to become a full-time artist as mm -hmm. of January 2018. Okay. So you've and been ever since that years. day, yeah, uh, it's been almost like a three-year ride now, and um, I can't believe how, um, how crazy the progression happened in such a little time. Mm-hmm. Who were some of your favorite clients, if you can share? Um, honestly, like, uh, I've worked with a lot of celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, my, my pieces are with a lot of people, but I'd say uh, Black Coffee. Mm -hmm. Black Coffee was like uh, a very like genuine human being. You yeah. Know what I mean? um, when I when I met him, like he he was very humbling. Mm -hmm. Right. He followed me on Instagram, he liked a bunch of my stuff. And yeah, he's a great guy, man. Mm -hmm. And he's got like worldwide audience, like worked with everybody like and it, just, it was like a little blockchain that just like trickled into like other things. Yeah. It, you were able to get other um, clients yeah, like from Snoop, them. Snoop was super cool too. Oh, no. uh, Rick Ross was super cool as well. Mm -hmm. um, another one, one of my favorites, Danny Green. Danny yeah. Green was a very humble guy. When we met, he um, he loved what I did for him. So he mm -hmm. asked me to come in the next day with the, with the custom piece I made for him to to a charity event that he was running. Um, there was like maybe like five, 600 kids. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to present the piece to them and they were asking oh, wow. questions. Yeah, he like got me really involved with them. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And it's funny because I know the first piece I got from you was actually the Fred Van Vliet. That's right. And yes. I got that for Sherrod's birthday, his That's birthday right. gift. Exactly. And there was a funny story behind that as well because you said you made that piece originally for Fred. For Fred, exactly. So um, it was uh, it was a combo birthday party that they had at Rebel. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fred and um, Danny Green were there. I presented both pieces to them. And um, I think he, he like left it. He forgot about it because mm -hmm. there was so much happening. In yeah, the, in, he got uh, too turned up. Got way too turned up. I, I don't think he was even drinking. Like he, he just had a lot of commotion happening mm -hmm. around him and he left the piece at, uh, in the back room. So I took it with me. I tried to contact his uh, management to get it to him. It, it, it was just taking too long. It was lingering and I didn't get any reciprocation back. So yeah. I just had it laying around. You asked for it and I just moved it on to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. So you went from club promoting to graphics design, and now you're one of the top artists in the city. Uh, it actually, it was, um, so I went to school for graphic design while I was a club promoter, right? Okay. So that's how I put myself through school by promoting. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I kind of got out of the promo game, I went into club manage uh, like owning, uh, ownership. Uh, I got myself out of that. I went to dental marketing. And uh, after dental marketing, I went to home flipping. After flipping homes, I, I, I got to my end goal, which mm -hmm. was becoming an artist. 
this is like so many it, different markets yes. that, that you've been able to touch in. Exactly. And I know you touched about NFTs earlier and I, I've been trying to do research and I've read articles and I watched videos. I still don't understand what an NFT is. Hopefully you can break it down a little bit um, because you said well, you're getting into I'm, that space. I'm, I'm, get, I'm trying to get into that space right now. So I just, uh, I just hired a personal assistant and for the past two weeks, uh, her full-time job was to research and know ins and outs of NFTs. Mm -hmm. And as she's learning, she's like slowly breaking it down to me. And um, what I've learned so far from her is that uh, it, it like works in the uh, virtual space. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a blockchain. Um, so it goes from one end to another end and it shows you who purchased it for how much, where the value went and, uh, who has it next. And every time it moves from one hand to another hand, the artist is, uh, receiving a residual from the piece, mm -hmm. which I think is cool because, um, when artists like musicians, they, they have residuals for their work. I feel like artists are in the same kind of wave. And they deserve to get taken mm -hmm. care of for their hard work as well. So essentially, you would create a digital piece, and that's what's sold. That you would put it strictly on the NFT, and somebody so a couple can of platforms bid right now. for it. Exactly, there's a couple and of platforms that you you upload your your work to, mm -hmm. and uh, people uh, virtually will will buy bid for it, and mm -hmm. it moves from one hand to another. Yeah, I've actually, um, I know there was, what band was it? There was a band that just announced that they did their um, either album or their whole concert series strictly on NFTs. And there's some people who have been making just like a lot of money off of well, one I, I simple I, I thing. I somewhere Do you know what that I mean? Tory Lanez was like one of the first guys to yeah. to sell like 300,000, some, something, some crazy yeah. number with... Uh, it was like an album or a track, something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I heard Tori was like one of the first ones. The weekend just tweeted that he's going to be doing an FT. Mm -hmm. So my biggest question with that NFT is though, how do you prevent people from copywriting your stuff, right? So for you, you have a digital, um, like digital art, right? So say you upload it. How do people not screenshot it? Do you know what I mean? Or uh, if like I was to upload a book, like how do you not just well, screenshot sure it like and then share? I'm pretty sure there's some regulations around it. I, I don't know personally myself, right? Yeah. But uh, from what I understand is like there's a there's a chain, like a, there's a serial number to it and that's mm -hmm. assigned to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you were to screenshot it, you don't have the authentic piece, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it's sold from one person to another person, there's a history that comes with it, with mm -hmm. the blockchain. I think that's how it's prevented, but I'm not 100% sure because yeah. it's it's a fairly new market, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I've been wondering about that. Just like, how are you going to prevent it? Because even with a song, like, okay, cool, you give me a song here. I, we have like these devices where we can essentially co record things and then you can just share it. Do you yeah, know what I, I mean? I think the difference so, is, is like you're, you're, you're not going to be the person that's receiving the dollar the value. The, yeah. the, the cryptocurrency behind it, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, you can have it, but mm -hmm. it's it's essentially has no value, mm -hmm. right? Without that blockchain. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. So, when you have the original NFT, it's almost like an investment. It's something that can exactly. appreciate in value there you go. over time. Like, you're buying exactly. almost like a stock or. There you go. So, it's an asset, yeah. essentially. That's exactly what I think it is. Yes. Okay. You're right. True. There's so much new things that are going on, and it's crazy how the world just keeps changing Evolving. in this like yeah. digital space and yeah. there's so much to know <laughs> yeah. well, for me i just felt like it was natural to kind of get into that room because my work is digital right i specialize in, mm -hmm. as, a, as a digital artist and i've been on this digital wave now for the last two years mm -hmm. so it's only natural for me to, to flow into it like i i have uh, i have two year a two-year collection mm -hmm. that i could drop in tomorrow Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, a lot of these other artists that were kind of against that digital wave uh, can't even get on this. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now they're trying to transition into it because they're seeing the difference. Mm hmm. What are some, so since you've been an entrepreneur for like a while now in multiple spaces, what are some, um, Things that you've learned over your journey that has really been able to transition from like industry to industry. Well, I, I feel like I kind of got the formula down packed. It's it's essentially two things, right? So basically, the first thing that you really need to have on your side to make sure that you're a successful business person mm -hmm. is a network, mm -hmm. right? Develop that network. It's essentially, I feel like if you have a base of a, of, a, of a network, you can. Uh, do anything you want after that because your network will support you, right? Yeah. And a second, secondly, treat it like a business, right? So when I say treat it like a business, like have a logo, 
have a set of business cards, have a website, have mm-hmm. a social media platform, market it, right? Yeah. Like invest some time and effort into making sure you have a brand that's recognizable, mm-hmm. right? Just like if you go anywhere, you see Walmart, you know Walmart, you see Starbucks, you see Tim Hortons, you know what they are, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So when you see that, that logo in the corner, Art by Amir Sam, you know that's my piece. Mm-hmm. Or even like a style for the artists, like a lot of your painting or artwork, sorry, that I see has a lot of the sparkles in it or like, right. you know what I mean? Like maybe it's like a certain type of graphic that you use on pieces like this yeah, that so kind I, of identify you. All my work essentially you. is, uh, is uh, vector based, right? Yeah. So when I say vector based, I, I, I like to use the program Illustrator mm-hmm. and um, you're using a mouse or a digital pen mm-hmm. to draw something that could be expanded to the size of a building mm. without losing any pixel Quality. resolution yeah. exactly so that's how that's that's the thing about um, digital marketing digital art sorry mm-hmm. is the fact that you can turn things into digital pixels mm-hmm. yeah now since i started picking up pieces from you i follow a bunch of different artists on ig and i see a bunch of people now starting to follow the trend and pretty much do the same thing that you're doing now, right? I, I'm sure you've right. seen it as well. I've been seeing it left, right, and center. <laughs> How do you stay ahead of the curve? How do you stay ahead of the game so well, that you're, so you're leading the... Essentially, like, I, I keep an eye out on the culture, right? I see what's happening, and I'm, I'm, I'm constantly following things on Twitter, following things on Instagram, and I'm seeing where the wave is moving towards. So, uh, essentially, about a month or two ago, I started shifting from... Uh, traditional canvas to now I'm doing stuff 3D um, die cut on plexiglass it's a whole different material yeah and um, when you see it 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 still has that luxury look to it Mm -hmm. right and and now I'm integrating these 3D cutouts onto canvas right with a frame LED lights that are controlled with your cell phone just I'm trying to make art more technology yeah more technical Mm mm-hmm that's definitely the way the world is going. You can see even with COVID and people working from home, now everything right. is technology based, mm-hmm. exactly. essentially. And exactly. I feel like those LED lights have become very popular in yeah. the last year in yeah. terms and of like for COVID, crazy. I guess because more people are staying yeah. home. So they're yeah. like, let me have some colorful lights in my mm-hmm. like. <laughs> it Facts. wasn't as trendy as it is right now. Right, like I got on this, that, that, that those lighting strips with mm-hmm. the LED lights about five years ago, I started collecting them. Yeah. And um, it's crazy how they've lasted for five years. Right? Oh, that's amazing. They still amazing, work yeah. just as good as I bought them five years ago. And mm-hmm. right now, I have a, a two-floor uh, gallery downtown Toronto on uh, by Front and Spadina, mm-hmm. by uh, Fort York and Spadina, sorry. And the whole place is all set up like that. Every single bulb, every single strip is all connected to a cell phone, connected by Wi-Fi, and you can control whatever color you want it. So you can set the tone, you can set the mode to like wherever you're feeling. Yeah. Has COVID impact your business? Oh, man. COVID really helped my business. I uh, It, like, honed me in because, A, you're not allowed to leave your home, right? Mm-hmm. So it, like, settled you down, right? No and distractions. No distractions. It's just you're focused and it, it, like, made you go back to the drawing board and try to figure out what you got to do to survive this new norm, mm-hmm. right? And the fact that people are at home looking at bare empty walls yeah <laughs> or or they they they've had to transition into working from home so now they have a home office with bare walls what are they, what's the first thing you're gonna do put up some art right yeah and um i've been all over social media for such a long time and I, i've gotten so much love from the city that uh word of mouth has been a big factor of my business and i do one piece for one person that person recommends it to a friend mm-hmm. and it just spreads mm-hmm yeah no that's definitely key and i see that like you know having that network is is important like before i sold real estate i was selling cars so pretty much i transferred my network from cars to real estate and so my old customers started buying houses and stuff like that with me how would you say is like the best way for you to build that network for someone that's starting from zero they have a brand new ig account and they're like i don't know a lot of people like how do you build that loyal fan base um that is a that's a great question and I, I'm, I'm not the person to answer that because where i came from like i was um a part of an era where people went to clubs or people went to bars or people went out to socialize to yeah, build that you network. met people in real life i met exactly to online yeah, now exactly right so i was able to meet that that personal network and then i transitioned from meeting them face to face to 
to online, mm -hmm. to social media, right? Mm -hmm. And I kept it consistent with whatever whatever business I, I was getting myself into, right? I transitioned my my actual main page into that, right? Yeah. So when I was that the party guy, everything you saw was me in a club popping bottles around a lot of beautiful women, mm -hmm. dressed in designer from head to toe, just kind of giving that image out, right? Yeah. And then when I got myself out of that and I kind of went into the, the dental marketing world, I changed up my style. I was more corporate, more mm -hmm. like cleaner. And you no longer saw pictures of me at a club, bottles, girls. It was a whole gotcha. different way. So you right? archived all that stuff and exactly. you just rebranded yourself. Rebranded myself. And then when I got myself out of that and I got into home building, everything it's on my your page. Your houses. Yeah. And exactly. then it's like. Houses, you know? yeah. So it's like people are following you along this journey. Yeah, for exactly. sure. And if you look at it now, it's just all art. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're kind of giving an, uh, a new audience somebody that um, that recommended you to a friend, and they say, "Hey, go check out his page." Right, when they go land on your page, the first six nine tiles need to reflect what you're doing in, yeah. in your life right now. Right, mm -hmm. so if I had pictures of myself on vacation or like just it's nothing to do with with the art, that person will go on that page and kind of be like, "Is this guy really an artist?" You know yeah. I mean? So. I definitely agree with that. If you're trying to build yourself as a brand or um, in general, or if you have a service or products to sell, then it has to be reflective. Like if anybody goes to my page right now, you for sure know that I got some sneakers, right? But go. like if I was away and I was traveling and I was going on some world tour, you might just think that all I did was get flued out or something. But yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. It's definitely like the... I would say nine to twelve at least, right? That's it. Give yeah. one little scroll down, and then people can kind of get the look gist at like, of what you are interested in. What if I have a new interested? client looking at my work today, right? Looking mm -hmm. at my page today, what are they going to think? So that's what I, that's that's something I always put into perspective. Yeah, that's a great way. Um, what do you do for inspiration though through the lockdown? Like, how do you find your inspiration to create? Because I know that that was a big thing, and we've seen a lot of musical artists not create as much music as they did because they were just stuck in a house and they didn't feel like they were really getting any inspiration so uh, honestly instagram instagram yeah. is the greatest tool to <laughs> i love me some instagram yeah, because you don't got to leave wherever you're you're situated you don't got to go anywhere yeah just kind of like go on the explorer page and let it do its thing you can get lost in social media i say 100%. you can get lost in tiktok all the time and yes. tiktok has been doing amazing things um i don't know if you're in that space but you should definitely start trying to do like live not you live, but I, um, like do videos. I kind of dabbled into that. TikTok for a little while, but um, the bulk of my clients are coming from Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, I put all my efforts into that. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok was just a whole different kind of wave, and um, I just felt like for what I was doing, it didn't really relate to me as, as much as Instagram did. Mm -hmm. Well... I, I'm a believer in diversifying your digital footprint. Because <laughs> you never know. Because you, then you might go on TikTok and then start getting a whole different clientele that you didn't even know, right? right. It's like whenever you get into with TikTok, when you get into that niche and then just people start coming and then you never know how it expands it. But yeah. Most definitely. So for any young entrepreneurs that you know are watching this right now, what would you say are some secrets to success some gems that you can drop. Obviously, being able to pivot and you know go in mm -hmm. different industries are important. But what would you say is some very important keys for success? Treat whatever industry you want to get into as a business, mm -hmm. right? Develop a brand. That's number one. Invest some money into your branding. I see a lot of these guys that want to start a business and they go out to a Gucci store and they buy a whole lot of drip and they don't want to invest anything into their actual business. That's a backwards mentality. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Take that money that you were going to buy drip for and put it into your business. Find a good graphic designer. Find a good web designer mm -hmm. and put some money into them. Invest some time and money into them and get that business off the ground and then start worrying about the other things. Yeah. That's the biggest thing right there. Mm -hmm. Unless you're an influencer, a fashion influencer, don't go and buy all the money, like the clothes, spend your money on that. Like really figure out how you can make your product or service better that's because it. that's what people Facts. are really going to um, share. And what they always say is that, you know, if you have a good product, somebody they'll share with like three of their friends. But if you have a bad product, they'll share with like 11 people. Right. So you would rather them share with only three friends because you got that good, good and not the bad stuff. For sure, most definitely, brother. Do you have any like favorite movies, favorite books, or albums that you know inspire you to be the entrepreneur and the um, businessman you are today? Uh, 
as far as movies, honestly, I'm I'm always in front of my computer. Like mm. I'm I'm always doing some research. So I might have a movie on in the background, but it just background noise yeah. it's like white noise in the background mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't really have a favorite movie i don't really have a favorite book um i'm just a very social person you know gotcha any new music you're listening to right now uh who uh who am i listening to right now honestly i'm just um nobody in particular right now you're just in the lab I'm, yeah i'm in the lab and because usually when i'm working I, I focus on the work and the, whatever's happening in the background is just to kind of just settle yeah. in the noise yeah to make you feel like you're just not in this like a yeah, space, and, and, you know and what I mean. Lately, there hasn't been anybody new that came out as an artist that was like, "Yo, let me look into dig into more of him." You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can give you a long list. I'm just saying. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that. Share, share that with me for sure. Um, where can people find you on social media? So if you go on uh, Instagram, it's a m e r mm -hmm. dot s m, mm -hmm. or if you go to my actual art page, which is art by Amir SM. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to my website, which is artbyamirsm.com. Uh, you can go to my other site, uh, which is uh, amirsm.com. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a bunch of different ways you can you can get at me. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to make sure we drop all those in the description below. Yeah. Put them up on the screen. And, um, so yeah, you can buy like, some fabulous art. Yeah, you need some fire art to put yeah. on your walls. You, you know who to holler at. So you're more than welcome <laughs> to come check out the gallery anytime. Just hit me up in the DM. Mm -hmm. Send me an email. Send me a text. And uh, we'll communicate from there. That'd be really dope. We should get Sherrard to do one of his TikToks in there. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's yes. get on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Millennials to Millionaires. I'm Alicia Ace West. Daniel King sold. And that was our guest, Amir.